Hello friends, welcome to Unreal Engine Blueprints video tutorials series. In this video tutorial, we are going to understand begin play event and tick event. First, we understand the flow of execution between begin play event and tick event. After that, we understand why and when to use begin play event and tick event guys. So let's get started. Remember when you begin playing a level, first for each instance of the blueprint class, Begin play event is triggered once. When the level is fully created, level blueprint begin play event is triggered once guys. What happens? When you begin playing the level, for each instance of the blueprint class, begin play event is triggered once. When all the actors are created, then the level is considered as fully created. When the level is considered fully created, from the level blueprint, begin play event is triggered once guys. Let's have a demo and understand clearly. I go to Unreal Editor. I right click here and say new folder. Name it as Blueprints. And then I right click here and say Blueprint class. I say actor. I name this as BP underscore sphere. S P H E R E. BP underscore sphere. I double click to open it. I say add. I am adding the sphere here. You can see sphere is added. Next, I go to event graph. Here in the event graph, we have event begin play or begin play event. What I want? I want to get the name of the instance. For that, I right click here and search for self. I say get reference to self. Get reference to self. I drag a wire and say get display name. Get display name. It gives the name of the instance guys. And then I right click here and search for append node from the string here and then I connect the return value to A and then I say here space is created. So what happens here? Very simple guys. Let's say we have few instances. Let me say compile and save. I put this BP sphere here and then I drag a instance here. So I got instance. See I have BP underscore sphere. So self get display name it gives the name of the instance that is bp underscore sphere so if i drag another one another instance bp underscore sphere 2 so we'll get here bp underscore sphere bp underscore sphere 2 we have one more let's say bp underscore sphere 3 that is what the get display name does to the name we are appending is created okay so return value we are going to print i say here print string and connect the execution pins so when we say begin play, okay, when we click on this play button, for each instance, begin play event is triggered once. So we get the output saying BP underscore sphere is created. BP underscore sphere 2 is created. BP underscore sphere 3 is created, guys. Let me say compile and save. I go here and click on the play button. In the output log window, you should see it is saying BP underscore sphere is created bp underscore sphere 2 is created bp underscore sphere 3 is created so we understood the first line right we understood this first line when you begin playing the level for each instance of the blueprint class begin play event is triggered once only once when all the actors are created level is considered as fully created then from level blueprint begin play event is triggered once guys so for that i open the level blueprint here here also we have begin play event i drag a wire from this and say print string and say here level level is created or level created we can write compile and save now what happens we get bp underscore sphere is created bp underscore sphere 2 is created bp underscore sphere 3 is created after that we get level is created guys if i click on the play button you see level is created is getting displayed at the last so we understood both the lines right when you begin playing a level first for each instance of the blueprint class begin play event is triggered once when the level is fully created that means when all the actors are created level is considered as fully created from the level blueprint begin play event is triggered once guys now let's understand event tick followed by begin play events that means when all the begin play events are triggered for each instance of the blueprint class, tick event is triggered continuously every frame guys. That means if game is running at 20 frames per second, 
tick event is triggered 20 times in a second. If game is running 60 frames per second, if game is running at 60 frames per second, then tick event is triggered 60 times in a second, guys. So, for each instance of the blueprint class, tick event is triggered continuously every frame. Let's see that one. I go here, go to BP underscore sphere. Here we have the tick event. I drag a wire from this and say print string. Okay, what are we going to display? Same. I am going to copy this info, control C and paste. Okay. Instead of saying is created, here I say is updating. Is updating and connect the return value to in string. Okay. Now I hope you guys are going to understand everything clearly. Compile and save. Now if I click on the play button, you see I stop it. You can clearly see that. We are seeing first BP underscore sphere is created, BP underscore sphere 2 is created, BP underscore sphere 3 is created, level is created. Only once they are getting displayed. After that, you see BP underscore sphere is updating, BP underscore sphere 2 is updating, BP underscore sphere 3 is updating. Again, BP underscore sphere is updating, BP underscore sphere 2 is updating, BP underscore sphere 3 is updating. So it is going to be continuously executed, guys. Understanding? So even tick is going to be continuously triggered for each frame. Understanding? That's good. Next, after that, level blueprint tick event is triggered continuously every frame, guys. That means, if I go to level blueprint, here also we have tick event, you can see, I drag a wire from this and say print string and here I say level is updating. Compile and save. I come here and click on the play button. Let's see what is happening, guys. Stop and see here. First, begin play events are triggered. After that, you see it is saying BP underscore sphere is updating. BP underscore sphere 2 is updating. BP underscore sphere 3 is updating. Then level is updating. BP underscore sphere is updating. BP underscore sphere 2 is updating. BP underscore sphere 3 is updating. Then level is updating. So this is going to be continuously executed. Event tick is continuously executed every frame. So that is the flow of execution guys. When you begin playing the level, first for each instance of the blueprint class, begin play event is triggered once. When the level is fully created, level blueprint begin play event is triggered once. Followed by begin play events, for each instance of the blueprint class, tick event is triggered continuously every frame. After that, level blueprint tick event is triggered continuously every frame guys. Now we understood the flow of execution. I hope you, you guys have clearly understood. Let me close this, close this and I'm going to create a new level here. Basic create. I'm going to save it file. Save current level as. I call this level 2 and then I say save. Now we are going to understand. Okay, Now we are going to understand when to use begin play event, when to use tick event. Begin play event is used to set initial status of an actor or the level or the game guys. It is used to set initial status of an actor, the level or the game. Whereas event tick is used to change or update the status of an actor, level or a game continuously every frame. So if you want to set the initial status of an actor, then you go for begin play event. If you want to update the status of an actor continuously, then you go for event tick guys. So let's have a demo and understand. I right click here, say blueprint class. I select the actor and say here BP underscore cube. I hit enter. I double click to open it. I say add. I'm going to add a cube. So I have a cube added. You see that compile and save. I go to label two. I drag BP underscore cube inside. See, I bought a BP underscore cube here. And if you see, it is not rotated. You can see it is not rotated in X axis, Y axis or Z axis. It is not rotated. So, rotation X is 0, Y is 0, Z is 0. Let's say when I click on the play button, I want this cube should be initially rotated by 45 degrees. Okay. So, what I do, I go to event graph. I go to begin play event. So, here I simply say here, Set actor rotation, I say set actor rotation, set actor rotation around Z axis by 45 degrees. Okay. So this BP underscore cube instance should be rotated by 45 degrees when we play. Compile and save. 
go to level 2 and if I click on the play button, you see it is already rotated by 45 degrees. So any instance, let me bring one more instance here. I bring one more instance here. For each instance, of course, the begin play event is triggered once. So each cube, okay, each of these cube is going to be initially rotated by 45 degrees. If I click on the play button, see, each of them are rotated by 45 degrees. Let's say if you want to continuously rotate them, you want to continuously rotate them around Z axis 45 degrees, then where you go? You go to event tick guys, you go to event tick. So here I drag a wire and say add actor local rotation. I say add actor local rotation and here I say just one. Okay, I give one. That means the instances should rotate around Z axis one degree per frame guys. Compile, save, go to level 2 and click on the play button. See, all the cubes are rotating around Z axis 1 degree per frame. Right? So, I hope you guys have clearly understood what is the importance of event begin play and what is the importance of event tick node. Begin play event you can use to set the initial status of an actor, level, or the gamer. If you want to continuously do any changes, then you go for tick event, guys. That's it guys for this video tutorial. I suggest you people to try this yourself. In the upcoming video tutorials, we discuss more about blueprints. If you like this video, hit the like button and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited. For more benefits and be up to date, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep learning, keep designing, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.